one. The finish line is nearly in sight in the race for a COVID-19 vaccine. Joining us now is Dr. Maya Artandi with Stanford Healthcare. And both Moderna and Pfizer's vaccines are showing incredible promise so far. So how are these two vaccines different? Well, let me start with the dismal picture that we have, unfortunately. More than 55 million people worldwide have been um, infected with the coronavirus. In the United States, 12 million and more than 250,000 people have died. And unfortunately, it's not going to look better anytime soon. But there's light at the end of the tunnel. Um, when the coronavirus was discovered in January, researchers raced to find a vaccine. And in the last couple of weeks, two of the candidate vaccines have shown very promising results. One of the vaccines is made by Pfizer and BioNTech. And the other vaccine is by Moderna. And both vaccines have shown that they are 95% efficient, which is amazing because the goal was to have a vaccine that's more than 95% efficient. Both vaccines have also shown that they are very safe. No major side effects have been reported. Now, both vaccines need two shots. The Pfizer vaccine needs three weeks in between the shots. The Moderna vaccine needs four weeks in between the shots. The real big difference is in how those vaccines need to be stored. The Pfizer vaccine needs to be stored in really cold temperatures at minus 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Can you imagine minus 100 degrees Fahrenheit is pretty much a little bit warmer than the coldest day ever recorded on Earth. The Moderna vaccine needs to be stored at 25 degrees Fahrenheit, which are the temperatures of a regular freezer. And the Moderna vaccine can also be stored in the fridge for about 30 days, uh, which is great news. Both Pfizer and Moderna are looking to apply for emergency use authorizations in the next couple of weeks. And if the FDA approves that, then they are ready to make a lot of vaccines so the general population can be vaccinated. And Dr. Artandi, researchers also use slightly different protocols to study the vaccines? Only very slightly different protocols. So both Pfizer and Moderna, um, Moderna started their phase three trial on the same day, July 27th. Um, Moderna enrolled about 30,000 people in that trial. They divided them in half. Half got the vaccine, four weeks apart. The other half got a placebo, four weeks apart, a salt water injection. Pfizer enrolled more than 40,000 people in that trial. And again, half got the vaccine and um, three weeks apart, and half got um, a salt water injection three weeks apart. And then those people went about their normal lives, and they waited for getting in, an infection. Now, the criteria for the infection was a little bit different between Pfizer and Moderna. Moderna required two symptoms of COVID-19 plus a positive test. Pfizer only required one symptom of COVID-19 plus a positive test. Also, Moderna waited two weeks after the last injection, whereas Pfizer only waited one week after the last injection to see if people got infected. And Moderna also actually provided a little more data to back up their claims than Pfizer. What do those numbers show? So initially, Pfizer said that their vaccine was 90% effective, and they give didn't give any more data. And the reason for that is that they have planned to enroll more than 150 people before they publish preliminary results. Moderna said they want to have 95 people infected with the coronavirus before they give preliminary results. Moderna reached that a little bit earlier. And so when they gave the data analysis, they showed that 90 of those 95 people had not received the vaccine, those were placebo patients, five people who got sick had received the vaccine. There were also 11 people who were seriously ill, and none of these 11 people had received the vaccine. Um, analysis also showed that there was a good percentage of people who had been gotten sick with uh, SARS-CoV-2 um, who were over 65, and from diverse populations. Now, just a few days ago, Pfizer actually reached their endpoint of the preliminary results. 
Um, they now had 170 people who were infected with the coronavirus. And their data analysis showed that 162 people of those 170 had not gotten the vaccine. So only eight people who got sick with the coronavirus had gotten the vaccine. They had 10 serious illnesses. Nine of those 10 people had gotten the placebo and only one person had gotten the vaccine. They also showed that they had quite a diverse population. And as Dr. Valendra explained last week, the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines both use mRNA technology. Can you explain what that is and how it works for our viewers? <laughs> now we're getting really technical. <laughs> All right, let me try. So the point of a vaccine is to trigger the immune system to prevent an infection, in this car, um, case, the SARS-CoV-2 from happening. Um, there are several ways to do that. And both Pfizer and Moderna use a very new way. There has not been a vaccine yet that used mRNA. M stands for messenger RNA. And pretty much what it is is that the vaccine has the tiny little genetic bits, messenger RNA, included in fatty drops, and that gets injected, and then this gets delivered to human cells. And what the mRNA does, it's an instruction booklet for the cell to build a protein. It just builds one protein from the virus. It doesn't build the whole virus. The vaccine doesn't contain any virus, so there's absolutely no chance that someone can get COVID-19 from getting the vaccine. Now, this virus that both Moderna and Pfizer, um, the vaccine built, is the spike protein. I don't know if you remember, when you look at the coronavirus, it has all these little spiky things coming from the outside, and that's the protein that um, both Pfizer and Moderna's vaccines are um, coding for. Once the human cell builds the spike protein, then it gets secreted in the bloodstream, and then the antibodies can be made. So then the immune system reacts to the foreign protein, antibodies are made, and if the patient gets exposed to SARS-CoV-2, the body recognizes and fights it. All right, and let the record show, I think you did a great job explaining that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Are the other vaccine candidates using that same technology? There are lots of vaccines out there, and some of them actually use the same technology. So, uh, again, researchers are racing to find a vaccine. I think currently we have 54 different vaccines in human trials, and 87 are still in earlier trials, the animal trials. Um, there are different ways for those vaccines to trigger the immune system. So let's put those vaccine candidates in three big buckets. Bucket number one is the genetic vaccines. That's um, vaccines just like Pfizer and Moderna. Those vaccines contain a little bit of DNA or RNA that then helps the human cell build a protein, a virus protein. Bucket number two is adenovirus vaccines. And instead of a little fatty droplet, in those vaccines, an empty virus is used. So it's an empty virus, nothing bad happens. And you should just put the genetic material in this virus, and then it gets delivered to the human cells that way. And bucket number three are protein vaccines. And those are vaccines that have been used for years. So those vaccines contain a bit of a protein or a whole protein, and that then triggers the immune system. So much happening and, and so much hope for the future. And thank you for putting out those numbers, too, at the top of this interview. I think people need to hear those to just realize just how bad things are right now. But once again, yeah, some hope on the way. Yeah. Dr. Mayar Tandi with Stanford Healthcare, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure.